Oh, yeah. All right, so I just want to say thanks to Sierra for coming through and joining us for this week's episode. Uh, how you doing, man? Good, man. Thanks you for too. having me. No problem. So uh, we'll get you started. Uh, your name is Sierra, right? That's your artist name. Uh, uh-huh. What where, What is the story behind that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess I was kind of thinking like how, like to make something, you have to like see it, you know what I mean, and then make it. Okay. I guess I kind of like see the future for a second and then like make it actually happen. That's what's up. And so yeah, I don't know. That's what I try to do. Yeah, that makes sense. I was just curious, man, because when I first saw your name, I was like, I wonder what that means. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. definitely. So uh, we can just get the ball rolling. So you just dropped uh, Secret to My Strut. Honestly, like, I feel like it's one of the projects that's dropped this summer that really like embodies like the summer vibe. Like there's a lot of projects that drop obviously in the summer, but like this one, especially like every song, it kind of has like that, uh, summer romance vibe yeah. i don't know if that's what you were going for but um you definitely got like that like that summer vibe especially it's only four tracks but in those four tracks alone you got that uh across so um how was the uh just like the process of making that and just uh bringing that to life you said you see the future right so I yeah to well actually that. that's funny because i wasn't thinking of it like that but i kind of was like like I mean, like, I didn't grow up in Chicago, so, like, the winter super, like, just, like, fucks me up. <laughs> so, like, in the it winter, fucks up like, too. I think I was just, like, I was going through some shit, and I think, like, this project was, like, I was just kind of, like, dreaming of summer, and just kind of, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. kind of, and, and a lot of the material that, um, I, a lot of the material was either from last summer or, like, like, written about last summer, okay. um, or just, like, last year, so... Um, I don't know. I was making it also at the same time as I was making uh, Mexico with Big Body Fiji. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Big Body Fiji. Uh, but we were like making these projects at the same time, like and so like I was producing one, but and you know like that was like a really like kind of like serious process with me and him, and then like I was also making this other one and also doing all the vocals. So they're kind of like cousins of each other or something or like brothers or something like these two projects in fact like, there's like versions of se- se- songs from secret to my strut that y'all haven't heard yet they are gonna hear uh with like fiji verses on them and like like some of the some of the songs are like from the same samples like probably nobody will ever notice but like it's funny that you mentioned that though that we haven't heard it because Loki I have heard uh, a secret Big Body Fiji verse on Lay Low because that's yeah, my boy. Yeah. Shout out Big Body Fiji. Yeah, y'all are here soon. It's coming soon. I was gonna ask you one of the questions was gonna be, hey, are we ever gonna see that verse come to life? Because yeah. he goes crazy on that. Definitely, no, that'll definitely be a thing. Cool, cool. Um, I'm glad to hear that. And also, it's funny that you mentioned Mexico because that project is crazy on its own. Just um, yeah. Fiji goes incredibly hard and like the beats just kind of make. I don't want to say like make the project, but yeah, they do like. The right. beats are a big part of it, and it's just like really dynamic, and it's totally different from Secret to My Strut, if we're being honest. So, yeah. how would you? How was it like having those coincide at the same period of time? Like totally different. Like, well, I guess like as a producer, like when I'm writing a song, you know what I mean. Like I'm thinking about like who I, who the voice is like on okay. this track. Like I really don't make like loose beats. Like I don't send people beats. Like okay. I'm trying to start doing that just because that's what people want. Like to collaborate, <laughs> but like. Honestly, I just don't do that with my spare time. I'm, so like, every one of those beats I made for Fiji, and it's like, if you if you listen closely to Slay, and then you listen to uh, I think it's Run Around, like it's the same sample. Like, oh, Sam, like, I like, and, like if you listen carefully, like it's the same shit. Like, but it's just how I made it for myself, knowing how I sound, like how what I'm gonna bring to a song, like. I just did it different for him and for me, you know? Yeah. Because, cause like, we have, like, two different energies. And honestly, like, um, I learned a lot from working with him, too, like, in, in like, trying to kind of, like, cater to what he was going to do and, like, kind of almost, like, predict what he might, like, where he might go with a beat. Like, it kind of made me start thinking about that with my own shit. Like, where am I going with this track? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, where could I possibly take this? So, I don't know. It was, it was, like, really good for me to be working with somebody else at the same time especially somebody as like dope as fiji definitely and yeah his voice is like really iconic too like you know exactly when fiji's on a track yeah he has like that swagger to him like that bravado and he knows like he just knows what's good for like a song he knows what a song needs like to like pop and like be like 
the symbol and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And if you talk to him like as a like just regular, he it's like totally different too. So it's really funny. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rapping. I mean, it is and it isn't. Like he, he definitely like hit like the Fiji you hear, rapping is like Fiji. Like, yeah. That's definitely. Fiji, definitely. You know, like that's the one dude. So. So yeah. So um. This was the first time, this project was the first time I actually heard like vocals from you because usually I've heard your production for like Decent Militia. You had another tape before Mexico um, that was, uh, was that with Stunner Man? With ne oh, oh, uh, I See Money? Yeah, I, I listened to that one too. That was yeah, really yeah. Um, so how was it, uh, was this your first like project where you actually put vocals on your production? As Seer. As Seer, yeah. okay. Um, what, were, what were you before? I don't want to say. That's okay. <laughs> but it's out there. If you if anybody ever really gets to digging, you can find like, my old bands and stuff. Definitely. Because um, I mean, I've been making music and doing shit since I was a young young lad. So there's shit out there. You just gotta be super creepy. To find <laughs> we'll see if anyone's down to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Probably eventually. Eventually, I'm gonna have to start taking shit down or something. True. But um, no. Um, in terms of bridging like the production to like the vocals that I see her, how would you how would you describe that? Um I mean like I said, I've always been writing songs, I've always been like singing and shit. Like I think really this was just kinda like uh maybe I don't know, I this is just a product of like where I'm at and like who I'm, like who I'm working with and who I'm listening to Definitely. and like what you know, cause because, like, honestly, like, I'm so influenced by, like, what's going on in this city. But, like, ultimately, I'm not from this city. So it's, like, kind of bogus for me to just come in and be, like, <laughs> jocking everybody's style and, like, doing the exact same shit. So I kind of just try to, like, reference, like, what, you know, what I've always been listening to, what I've always been, like, trying to make. And that's how I, that's so, what comes out in my vocals, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like a, it's like a mix of, like, the people I'm around and, like, the like kind of like their voices influencing my voice, you know what I mean? Yeah. But also like just being where I'm from. And, and you said you're from Arkansas, like the South originally, right? So how would you yeah. describe that? Like when did you start getting into music? Was it over there? Um, I mean, I started playing music at a very young age. I mean, like at the, at the, basically the first time I ever saw somebody like performing music, I was like, I'm trying to do that. That's <laughs> my thing, you know, like. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know really what to say about it. I started playing drums when I was 12. I started writing songs shortly after. I started like, I never really learned to play guitar, but like I could play my own songs on guitar. <laughs> I, had a, I had like a couple different bands like that when I was just singing and playing songs. And, Dope. Um, I mean, I was always doing weird shit. I always liked like whatever wasn't like, I don't know, that's kind of what I'm still after. I was trying to like make shit that I don't know. I don't want to say like is ahead of its time, but just like shit that maybe just hasn't like is weirdly familiar, but not the same. I was gonna say there's something very nostalgic about your yeah. project, even though it's not like obviously it's a new project and stuff. Yeah, but it definitely has like that like nostalgic vibe to it, even though yeah, it's a, it sounds very unique though at the mm -hmm. same time. Um, so you said you started off with the drums and stuff. When did you uh, get into hip hop? Um, I guess like I. It was like pretty slow transition. Like I started listening to hip hop when I was in high school. Um, was that in the south or was that over? Here? Yeah, yeah. I was. I went to high school in Arkansas. True. Um, so that's kind of where I always say I'm from. <laughs> like, yeah, I kind of grew up all over there. Definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think like probably like the f like one of the first like rappers I was listening to was probably like Kanye West. Um, now like like a bunch of like just like weird like like people under the stairs and shit like that. <laughs> um, but then it kind of took me a minute to like catch up with like the current times. I mean like you gotta understand like being like in the south and shit and just like in a very like rural environment as a kid like I wasn't exposed to much. You know what I mean? So like hip hop was kind of like this like other world. It was like holy shit. It was like I mean music was already like that. Like any type of music that I was interested in like just sounded like something that wasn't like my surroundings, you know what I mean? And so, I don't know, that shit was big for me. That changed a lot for me, you know, yeah. 
Definitely. What was the uh, like f first? Was Kanye West the first rap artist that you, like really got you into rap that made you like find out like all like the discography and everything? Going Probably. On? I mean, the thing is, like, I can't, I can't like look you in the eye and tell you like I'm a hip hop head. Like, right. I'm not. Like, I like a lot of rap. I like a lot of hip hop. Like, but I'm not like a real student of like, right. like rap. Like, um. So what made you get into like producing for like types of, types of rap? When did you move into uh, the city? Maybe that'll help. Um, I mean, really, when I came to Chicago, it's kind of just what I like fell into doing. It's the people that I started making friends with, and like, um, I mean, like I said, like I, you know, like increasingly over the years, I was just like listening to more and more like hip hop and rap and shit, and just kind of like that was influencing. Like I, I got into making like I started using Ableton, like because. Yeah, it just seemed like the next logical step. So like I like that was probably when I was like twenty and it was just a minute ago. Um and so yeah, I guess eventually it was just like it just made sense. I was listening to rap, I was using a fucking computer to make music. I had like a four oh four sampler, a three oh three sampler. That was my shit. I was just so it just naturally I was just chopping shit all the time and Listening, I mean, like when I first started making beats, I was listening to like new jobs and shit like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I got really into like Black Star and shit, nice. and like just like, <laughs> like but like I don't know. Then I don't know. Then I kind of just you know all the SoundCloud shit started popping and like just like interesting shit started popping up. I remember like Goth Money Records was like one of the first things that like kind of caught my attention. I was like, damn, this is actually like, you know. And then Awful started taking off. And, yeah. That was really when I was just kind of like, this is actually like, I didn't feel like just a fan anymore. It was like, this is actually something I can like, kind of contribute to. Like, I like I get this sound and where this is coming from. Like, yeah. or, you know, or at least like, yeah, it resonates with me. I can't claim to like, know where it's coming from. Of course, I'll live, I'll live there. there. <laughs> SoundCloud definitely has like crazy influence too, especially. Yeah. Music is so on demand now compared to how it was before. So yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, when was the first time that you actually linked with like Fiji and Decent? <sighs> it was winter. It was not a lot. It must have been a year before last year. Uh, yeah, yeah, it would have been like the year before last. Oh. In like in like uh, maybe like February or March. Um, I like at that time I was doing more like just like running sessions for people like not even make like sometimes making beats but usually just like recording people okay um and that's what it was it was one of those sessions and it was literally like a fucking half a decent came through my like <laughs> tiny little at that point i was like everything it was like my bedroom all in like one yeah. thing and it was just like fucking nine or ten people just like packed in there like backwoods just one after another <laughs> and um we made jugging Sean Mammoth was in town. That's his beat. Yeah, we recorded his Juggin. Juggin's an epic record. Yeah, and, and like honestly, at the time, like I super fucked with it, but like that was the first time I'd heard of Fiji, um, or and like, or like really any of these like decent dudes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, it wasn't until after that song dropped, like I think it was like probably summer that year. Um, I was like, damn, this is, this song is like incredible. Like I knew it was good, like when we made it, but then like, you know, I wasn't thinking about it because it wasn't my beat. I just recorded it, you yeah. know. So like then later on, I listened. I was like, God damn, this is so hot, and I started listening to all the other shit, and like yeah, it just kind of was natural. I can't remember how exactly it all came together, but I started chilling with Stacks a lot. And once I made an EP with him, then it was kind of like, all right. Now like let's just get let's everybody get in rotation. Yeah. Like, let's, let's just make a bunch of shit with decent. And, like, and I mean those just like those now it's just like those are my guys. You know like like Sax is my homie. Josh I mean PG we can edit that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> PG that's my homie. Like yeah so that's what's up. Yeah yeah Jug is definitely like once I were like you grit your teeth because it's just like fucking banger like. And yeah, that's most of Fiji songs. That's what I think. That's what attracted me to the like decent militia, like the energy that they put in their music. Yeah. And you were at the Reggie show, so you saw like the way the crowd reacted, like yeah. all those beats. How was it like hearing your own beats uh, at Reggie's like 
It's dope. Yeah, I mean, okay. like, it definitely was like gratifying because, like, you know, I wanted, you know, I put a lot into work into these beats, sounding like raw as hell, and just hearing them like blasting it was like amazing. Um, but also, like, you know, like that kind of thing you're talking about, like Fiji's music, like makes you like grit your teeth and like, like, um, I kind of like when me and him were working together, you know, like we we have like different energies as like people, you know what I mean. And like I see like a different, you know, like another side of him when we're in the studio together. So it's like it's kind of like I was kind of taking that energy and like making something different out of it too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and uh, and and I think he did too. Like he kind of made like an effort to like kind of be like make something that was a little more like just not like better or anything. Just took more time. We just took more time with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It tells in the project, especially because like there's not a single like uh, like bad track. It's all like no fillers. Is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Like every yeah. song has like it makes like its uh, staple like energy felt and stuff. Um, I think my favorite would probably be uh, from uh, Mexico. It was definitely Bad Boy '97. That one is just instantly. instantly yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, Yeah, I mean like my production. That's like if you look like that's actually it posted from my page. It's the only track that's not. Off I think I noticed it. Too, yeah. And it's, yeah, because I fucking love that beat. Like, I was <laughs> so, so hard. Proud, I was so proud of that beat. And, like, yeah. Yeah, and the crowd at Regis, when, like, the Mexico show came up, like, everyone was just, like, uh, it was just positive energy. Like, they're, yeah. not, they're he's not rapping, like, about, like, the typical, like, maybe, like, the sound, I hate to say the term SoundCloud rap, you know, because, like, that's so general, but, like, the, like it's 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 a little different. And yeah. That's what I like. And that's, your music, too, like, your solo stuff is different. And that's what that's what attracts because uh, so many people are making music these days so it has to be different it has to stand out in order to hold its own weight and have like that replay value I feel. yeah so you definitely accomplished that with uh, secret to my strut for sure um, so something else I wanted to ask you was uh, what can we uh, expect in the future I know you have like maybe some visuals on the way I don't know if you want to reveal too much oh no, yeah that, no I'm cool yeah. with that um, what, what do we have in store? We're shooting, we're shooting videos, lots of videos. We're shooting run around mainly right now. That's so a great that song. That would probably be the first one to see. Probably. I think that's my favorite song, honestly, from Secret to My Strong. Right. Yeah, it's just, so, it has like cool. that vibe to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, also, I was planning on dropping a bunch of singles all summer. That's kind of what I told people I was going to do. But now, like, all those singles are kind of like, it's like, damn, these kind of fit together. like. I feel like it'd be kind of a shame to like just let them loose without. Yeah, them. <laughs> so I'm still deciding what I'm doing, but I got a lot of new shit that's gonna come out soon. Like, I don't know. I'm not really trying to surprise y'all or nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it, it's just gonna come when it comes. So yeah, you can't rush that, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I try to try to be efficient. <laughs> yeah, I try to get it out like when I can, but you know, yeah, ultimately it's not there until it's there. And, I don't know. I'd rather postpone something than put on something half-assed. That's definitely true. Mm. How would you describe your like creative process usually? Like, is it a, every uh, project different, every song different, or like do you kind of have like something that gets you into? Kind of, yeah. Cause like, I mean, other than like backwards, right? That definitely helps. <laughs> I mean, you gotta understand like that. I have so many projects that like nobody will ever hear. Like, they'll never be finished. They'll never become anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, I mean, I say that, and then, like, I'll like find something from two years ago that that was garbage and trying to make something. So like, um, but that being said, it's because I make like a lot of different styles. Like when it's just me chilling, like it's just, I listen to a lot of different shit. So like I have a lot of like unreleased, like unfinished, just like house tracks. Or just, like, dance, <laughs> or like just like dance music or like, right now I have like these really, it's like almost like funny songs. like. There's a doo wop song about uh, <laughs> about uh, birds, about the bird pack. I'll say no more than that, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll come out. It will. Maybe it will. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll use it. It's circulating emails right now. If you know somebody, maybe you can get it. <laughs> Um, I found out, yeah, because I was able to get that un that unreleased speech. Yeah, yeah, song, yeah. If you could get that, I had to. I had to dig for it. You could probably get a hold of bird pack. You probably get a hold of bird pack. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know, there's, a, there's just like a lot of like kind of crazy shit that I've been just trying out and it's just kind of like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and like 
I mean, usually it doesn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but that's kind of my style. It's like, it's like, yeah, that actually kind of works. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like that's kind of like what I'm going for a lot of the time. It's just kind of like I want to push that boundary. I want to try something different. Cause like, like I said, like, in especially in the hip hop, like, you know, I guess I've kind of found myself in like this hip hop context, and it's like. I'm not gonna be that guy who shows up trying to pretend like I'm, you know, some type of like hip hop head for life, like from yeah, Chicago. The sound club, club goggles. And yeah, like, I mean, you know, like I can, like that's cool, like that shit influences me, and that's like kind of a part of my life, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up, though. That's what's up. You stay true to yourself, man. It shows in the art, so that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Definitely. Do you have anything in the works with uh, more, more stuff with Decent on the way? What's good with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, like, projects that are just kind of chilling right now. Um, working on some shit with Monster Mike. Uh, there's a bunch of shit, um, I don't know if you're familiar with producer Glock. Glock, no. Uh, y'all should definitely check out my guy, Glock. True. Um, me and him have a bunch of stuff with stacks, like, we, that we just kind of, like, I don't know. We've been we've had a lot of sessions. We made a lot of stuff, and it's just kind of we've never like quite like just like rounded out a project and put it out. Yeah. But like that'll eventually be a thing. Um, me and Fiji are like still like tossing shit back and forth. Me and uh, Jose Franco. Shout out Jose Franco, bro. That project yeah, he put out this summer, really good. Oh, his shit is, bro. Don't get pop. <laughs> shit goes yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's only three tracks and like y'all yeah. y'all been dropping short projects. And it came out, <laughs> yeah. People kinda grouped our projects together in a way, like yeah. and I, I love that because like I don't know. Yeah, Jose's that dude, so Yeah, the first song I heard from him was um the uh, dealership track. Yeah. And you now that once I heard that I was like, Oh, this is some other shit. Like, yeah. Right here. Yeah, no, that's and like that's somebody too who like I just like respect his like kind of journey as an artist and shit. Yeah. So there are a lot of people like that in Decent who are just like, Definitely. you know, like have like a unique story or like a unique like journey as an artist and that shit is just dope as hell. So I'm excited about everything that he's about to do. Um, I got some shit with fucking Lil Illy somewhere. True. You know, I just there's a bunch of shit. There's a bunch of shit. I'm just not sure what's coming when. It's just a matter of like who, who slides when and what. Right. So. Yeah, that's what's up. So I know that you, so you do be mastering stuff, or because I saw that it was like uh, classic studios, right? It was where. Uh, Secret yeah, I'm at, like I mastered Mexico. Um, I mastered. Uh, I see money. But yeah, I, I mean, like. I guess just like with my solo project, it's like okay, I already like produced this, did all the vocals, like mixed it. Yeah. It's like I don't know, if, like. I can be objective enough to like master it too, you know what right. I mean? Because I think like sometimes like that's like you need somebody else's ear to really make it like yeah, someone not biased to like yeah refresh your yeah so like and I really I really don't like giving other people my mixes very much like different people just have different ears different priorities you know in a mix and like sometimes my shit my sound an engineer might hear that shit and be like why would you mix this this way but like for me it's like i did that on purpose like i wanted yeah. it like that so you know it's there's better. really no rules when it comes to it right it's kind of yeah just like subjective but you know like i've learned a lot from sitting in on classic sessions um just about mixing and mastering tracking and shit so um i definitely and like he's he's mastered a decent number of my projects now or things that i've at least been involved with so i just trust buddy with the mastering <laughs> like more than i trust myself you know so then Classic Studios has part of, so I, I don't yeah. think you for trusting them. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, like they're Definitely. staples, so that's like... Especially you know, in the city. It was like, in a way, in a, in a way it was just like, I, I gotta have somebody else involved in this project. You know what I mean? Right. Might as well be, you know, classic, so... Yeah. Did you have anyone else involved in uh, Secret to My Strut that uh, played like a part of role? Maybe like, maybe the visual stuff? I saw that there was like some visual direction. Uh, yeah, I'm working with, um, I'm working with these guys, uh, Lunch Studio. Okay. Nicole and Timmy, shouts out y'all. <laughs> um, they basically, Timmy did the, uh, Timmy Parker, he did the design for my project. The photo was by uh, Alexandro. Yeah, I know him. He's really good. Yeah, um, and he's like that dude for sure. 
Um, so he took that photo, but then Timmy did like the layout and design for me. For sure. And then like basically when he came through and heard the project, he was like, and I started telling him my ideas about videos. He was like, well, you should bring us on lunch studio to like help you like kind of like see that vision through um, at, with like art direction and shit like that. So um, I started working with them. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like the videos. Like I'll be working with multiple different people. I'll be doing some stuff with destination visuals for sure. Yeah. Um, and just like some other random people that I don't, you know, I don't really know how to shout them out because I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's coming. True. Yeah, yeah. Is there any um? So you've been doing like collaboration stuff. Is there anyone in the city that you're like maybe a fan of, or you you like their music that you'd like to like? Uh, reach out and like maybe make something in the future? Yeah, I mean there's a few people. Um, shit, I mean like if I could make a beat for any rapper in the city right now, I would definitely make a beat for a ballet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, like yeah, his ass is Um, I feel like I could, I feel like my style would go with this shit, but, so that would be cool. Uh, I don't know. I think Rick Wilson's doing really cool shit. I like to work with him. He's sick. Yeah, he's doing like some positive shit. Right? Yeah, yeah, and just like I like, <laughs> I like the, like the housey vibes and shit. I, I feel like, yeah, that shit's really raw. So I don't know. Yeah, there's definitely some people in the city that I'm like, that I have on my radar. And there are people I've been talking to too, like where, like that I'm gonna be working with, just gonna make it happen. So definitely. Yeah, there'll be some more collaborations, some more like singles and shit dropping here and there. I want to get more people involved in my next like project, like um, the, you know, like I didn't have any features or anything on that yeah. first one, and I was intentional, you know, like I wanted to be like, look, like this is what I do, this is what I sound like. It was a nice introduction, I think. So. Yeah, yeah, right. But like now it's kind of like, okay, so you know what I'm doing, like, <laughs> you know, I want to open it up. I really want to start rap, out, or not rapping, <laughs> not rap, but like I, I want to start like singing on other people's beats, okay. like like other people's production. It's something I've like never done. At all so uh, yeah I don't know I think like I'll write there's some like I think most of those like dreams are kind of like unlikely but, uh, we can make the valley one happen for sure oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's make that happen. we should definitely make it happen <laughs> I said I don't make beats but I'll make his ass a folder of beats yeah <laughs> send him a nice pack you yeah, yeah. some little loops you know just some little <laughs> snippets definitely <laughs> um, so you have like a very unique sound, but uh, would you have like any uh, people that you've listened to that you would like credit as like influencing you like some way down the line? Yeah, I mean like it's so many people though. Like, yeah, and I'm sure it's not even. Just, it's like, like if you were, if you're talking about like a specific song, I could be like, well, there's this guy, this guy, and this guy, yeah. and whoever the fuck I sampled. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but shit. Um, in recent history. This doesn't even apply to like Secret to My Strut, but all the shit I'm making now is probably super influenced by uh, like Steve Lacey. Like his little demo is going crazy. I can't stop listening to it. SZA. Yeah, like, she's going really crazy. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just influenced by whatever I'm listening to at the time. Right now, I'm listening to this weird fucking dude, William Onyabar. Never yeah, you heard of him? Shit. Yeah, uh, he has a song called Fantastic Man. Mm -hmm. I've, I've sampled it probably like four different songs. I wonder if you will notice. Nice. But uh, <laughs> he's super cool. A super, super fucking buddy. <laughs> Fantastic Man is amazing. I gotta check this one out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look so good. <laughs> that shit's crazy. Sounds good. Oh. So your project is called Secret to My Strut. Mm -hmm. What is the secret to your strut? <laughs> the project. You're right. Like so <laughs> the contents of the EP. Nice. Like, um, I guess like that project is kind of about, you know, uh, I mean, like the themes of the lyrics are kind of like conquering something. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the mood of it. It's not necessarily what I'm talking about, but that's like the mood of it is like mm -hmm. kind of like coping and conquering something or like looking at like kind of a shit situation like with, and like romantically or whatever and just right. be like, right, like I'm cool like I'm good <laughs> like you know whatever I gotta do smoke dope get fucked up take some sands whatever I'm good, <laughs> I'm good. Um, 
Nice. So I guess like I guess like the secret to my strut is like uh, just kind of like these experiences like taking like experiences and, and like accepting like your kind of like fuck ups and like accepting like damn I'm like I, yeah I don't know just that like you're like constantly tweaking and shit that do stupid right. shit and it's just that's like, real life though yeah and just like kind of being like you know what like I'm so cool as shit like I'm doing my thing like that you know that's my dollar you know like it's a secret to your strut you know like what I don't know I guess it's kind of a universal thing like it could be yeah, and I'm like sure Tyler's like, got like yeah, November. He's like taking me back to November. Secret so much stress like that. Like, secret to your strip. Like what's the secret? You know. Everyone has like their personal like take on the project. It means yeah. something it's probably unique. Well, to like, like okay, like the song "Fixated." Like that song. Like just picture like you meet this girl. You're like out with this girl. The next morning you fucking wake up and you're like a pep in your step. And you're like, that's the secret to your strut. You know what I mean? Like that. Like fixated. Like that's about having like strut in the next day you, yeah. know what I mean? you know what i mean so like yeah yeah and it's not even it's not even like a hip-hop album per se but it definitely has like that swagger to it like i don't know like how yeah you, swagger, you know what i mean yeah like i, I mean yeah like i said I, like i listen to a lot of rap i listen to a lot of hip-hop but like, yeah i'm like, try and recreate it you yeah. know like yeah. that's so yeah, definitely a great album. I gotta thank you for like putting that out and stuff. Yeah, man. man thanks. I can't wait for like a yeah. full length uh, project. So hopefully we we'll, we'll see that in the yeah. at some point. No, no time soon. No rush. <laughs> yeah, I mean maybe. I don't know. I mean, like I said, these singles are like, coming together as a project. That, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, wherever time takes it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, so, what's the best way for people to like uh, listen to your music? I don't know if you're like on Spotify or not. I know I listen to your project on SoundCloud. When the video, when the first video drops, everything will be on SoundCloud or iTunes. Or I mean, uh, Spotify and iTunes. True. Right now it's just SoundCloud. Yeah. Keep it all in one place, nice and tidy. Nice and tidy. One little package, yeah. And uh, where can people follow you on like social media to like keep up with you? And stuff? You can follow me on Twitter, Seer Type B. Nice. Just follow me on Twitter. Don't try and follow me on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, that's some weird shit. Right? Yeah. I don't Facebook, Facebook, I don't know. I don't fuck with Facebook except. That's where I look at politics. Like that's honestly like I look at politics there, and I and like that's the only things I post is like politics. So I, I hate mean, seeing politics I mean, on Twitter. I came from the South, man. There's a lot of backwards people that I feel like need the message. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's obvious we all can see that people need the fucking message. Yeah. What 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 are your feelings about like the shit that just happened with like the fucking KKK? Well, that's what I'm saying, man. Stuff. People need to fucking this is bogus as hell. It's embarrassing. Like I'm embarrassed to be white in 2017. <laughs> like, like people are fucking dumbasses. And I grew and like I see I've seen a decent amount of that. Like growing up in the south, like, like I definitely. I mean, I have like fucking racist cousins and shit. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. It's a reality over there. It's though. definitely real and like I like. I've definitely seen enough of it to know that like it's a real fucking problem. Like it's a real thing. And now, I mean, obviously everybody can see that now. Well, apparently some people still can't fucking see it. But yeah, ignorance, all right. Yeah, right. That's They're choosing not to see it. So yeah, I don't know. It's fucked up. It's a real fucked up situation. Definitely. And it's not many sides to it either. There's not, and that's funny because Donald yes, Trump was yeah, like, oh that's yeah, what I'm saying, that's Buddy what I'm was saying, like, oh, there's all these sides to things. I hate to make this interview like all politics and stuff, but it's not. But <laughs> it's like real life, real life shit. What the fuck? 2017 presidents and asset. KKK is alive and well. 2017 is like a giant South Park episode. Yeah, honestly. what the fuck? Every but like day, the best like, music show. <laughs> like I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like bad times, good music. Like that is so true because we've had so much good music this year. If you look yeah, like, yeah, like projects like good like not just singles this year it's like projects are dropping that are like back to back good as hell can you name top three uh projects from 2017 uh i'm not gonna do top three i'm gonna do random lists go for it already mentioned scissors project control flower boy flower boy is an amazing like, piece of work honestly like i'm not even gonna get into it amazing project <laughs> steve lacy's little demo Amazing. Did that come out this year or was that last year? I haven't heard that. I think it was this year. That was this year. That's pretty yeah. recent, right? Mm -hmm. I started listening pretty recently, honestly. Um, what else came out this year? I listened. I liked fucking Shakira's album. What? <laughs> that shit was 
so. Can we talk about that a little bit more? I mean, like... <laughs> I did not expect that. I was expecting a lot of things. <laughs> I don't know, like, like, I don't know how I have to go listen that. to this I album, just, though. I, like, one day I just saw that Shakira came up and I was like, oh, fuck it. And that shit is raw as hell. It's so good. Like, I'm trying to think, uh, it's like, what? It's like, I don't know. She has that really, song time. Like, yeah, so. she really, I don't know. She really has like a cool, like, song. Just as cool, like, since we've got songs. I don't know if people write her songs or what. I honestly don't know her situation. Yeah. Don't know a whole lot about Shakira, to be honest. Other than she's fucking dope. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like uh, Kendrick's project, Damn? Yeah, Damn is really good. Um, I honestly don't have, like, a lot to say about it that hasn't been said. Yeah. It's fucking dope. Yeah, he probably, Kendrick, Kendrick. He's the fucking better one of those like great voices of our time, great voices of 2017. Yeah. He's able to like blend like actual like I not even conscious rap, but like just like the truth and to mm-hmm. his music to make it still listenable and you still want to replay it, but if you listen to the words he's actually saying some shit. Like, yeah. You know what I have been listening to a lot? Uh Playboy Cardi shit. And that shit goes crazy. I listen to that a whole lot too. Cardi has sauce for sure. Yeah. And just like, I've been really influenced by those beats too. It's like, pretty like simple beats, but like... They're like simple, but crisp and like, just like... Yeah, and like, I don't know, like there's just like a certain like, movement to them. Like, yeah. I don't know, like a certain like, pacing and shit that is like, really cool. So, yeah. like, super fuck with Playboy Cardi shit. Two was... Chainz shit is cool. Oh, I haven't, I haven't actually listened to that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It was. Yeah, I really want to check out the Shakira album. Now. What's it called? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit, I'm actually not sure. Like, it's on my iTunes. I'm actually yeah. not sure what it's called. It's like the one. It's Man, like and you put it on iTunes. That's golden that's cover. <laughs> it's like her face. And, yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah, she's fucking great, man. Um, Rihanna's thing did that drop in 2017? That was last year. Yeah. She didn't sound. That was really. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Rihanna's beautiful. Too. <laughs> yeah, goddamn. Heavy titty, heavy titty Rihanna is. Uh, <laughs> Team Thick Rihanna, right? Yeah, yeah, Team Thick Rihanna, I love it. People were talking about like, oh, I mean, the angles. All Rihanna, it doesn't like, yeah, just yeah. whatever she does, she can't lose, so that's great. People were criticizing like certain angles from like that outfit she was wearing. I like, bro, any angle, it's Rihanna. Like, how can you, like, <laughs> you're just. People have stupid. literally, people have nothing to do, bro. People yeah. are so fucking bored. That's why I have to get off to an Like, you're really gonna hate on Rihanna. Like, that takes energy yeah. to be like, what about Rihanna can I like hate on? Yeah. Like, that's a, you gotta really search, bro. We don't mess with the haters over here, <laughs> for sure. So, um, you've been listening to a lot of dope music, so that definitely, like, would you say that influenced, like, the music that you've been making, too? Yeah, so honestly, too. yeah. It sometimes, it sometimes I have to, like, stop listening to music to make music, though. Yeah. Like, I do too much, like, listening to, like, listening to my shit side by side with other shit and just being like, it's like, it's like, this is, this is like barely even a beat. Like, why am I comparing this to like a beautiful, like right. 17 song album or some shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, I kind of have to get out of like fan mode to like make shit. So right now, like, I'm kind of like doing both cause I'm not really like trying to finish something right now. But once I get in that mode where I'm like really trying to finish a bunch of shit and put it out, I'll probably stop listening to stuff so much so I can kind of like focus on what sound I'm trying to make, right. you know? But right now I am taking in a lot, I'm like just like absorbing a lot of shit from the music. Um, uh, yeah, I mean like I, I've been thinking a lot about how like like uh, what's his nuts? How the creator like incorporates like different like just how he references himself, like references like other songs and shit on a project or like other. And like, I don't know, I've been thinking about it. Like he's really smart about how he places things like yeah. that. Like he has that one spot where he says, it's in like the second to last track or something, where he's talking about like, something about my day ones turn to three or fours when they hear track seven. I just butchered that probably, but you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, like, it's like referencing Garden Shed. And like Easter egg type stuff for like maybe the- Yeah, like how did you know? Like, how did you know that was gonna be track seven? And how did you, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. It's cool that he like has like a whole vision like that and you start to see it like reference yeah. itself. Kind of so, like a blueprint. Yeah. So like little things like that, it's like I kind of sprinkle that like type of thinking in there now before yeah. I go super crazy with like the production and just making stuff like super cool. Definitely. So, 
So uh, I know that we like I, based on this conversation, we can tell like producing takes a lot of work. It's not just like something you just for me. Yeah, I work. mean, I think like some people are pretty. I've watched certain people who are just like ding 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 ding. ding. Like, <laughs> I mean, like I'm I can do that. I have those days, but like there are a lot of days where I literally like sit there for just like hours and hours, like just fucking not getting anything done, just like smoking dope and like starving myself. And, like, <laughs> The creative Tupper and just like you know, like then eventually, like eight hours in, something cool starts happening. I start getting excited, like making shit. But like, I got to the point like I'm not trying to. This isn't a fucking hobby. Like it's not always fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's going to work, and I'm not getting paid for it. But you know, yeah. I'm trying to make shit happen. And besides making shit happen, it's just like this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be doing with my time, spending my time on. I spend my money on it, you know what I mean? Even if I'm making money on it, I'm still going to be spending money on it to make it happen. It's my fucking right. baby, a brain child. So given like the, the fact that it's like a lot of work, it's like an actual job, what would you say like to the climate of the producing like uh, talent these days where it's like, there's a lot of talk where producers aren't getting their credit. There's a lot of talk where like producers uh, are not getting paid the way they should maybe, or like yeah, people I mean, stealing beats, stuff like that. What what do you feel about like that type of climate in the music? Like, I do think, you think producers are getting. I think credit? it's definitely like. I think it's always been like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just in general, not just in hip hop, like just in general, like you know, if there's a song, if there's like a Motown hit, like that's a Marvin Gaye song. Yeah. Or, like, I mean. Maybe I shouldn't speak on that because I actually don't know how involved Marvin Gaye was. Yeah. But like, you know, like for all I know, like that's just like a team of like producers and and like uh, musicians and shit. You know what I mean? Who are all just like put in place to like make some shit happen. And then Dudas comes and like they stamp his name on it when he sings right. that track. You know, and like that's kind of how rap works, right? Like, um, and just now, like. I mean, people have to, like, that's the whole reason, like, producer tags are even a thing, because somebody, like, nobody's going to pay attention unless you, like, audibly say, like, fucking, you know, we got London on the track. Would you ever have a Sear, a Sear producer tag? (laughs) I've tried a couple out. I haven't found any, I I would, I just haven't found anything I, like, super like. Um, I think mainly there's shit that I, there's, like, little taglines that I say when I'm singing that don't mean anything, um, that are kind of, like, I think of that kind of like a tag, just because like kind of how I start a verse sometimes. It's just like singing, like I can do it too. I don't know how I say it. It doesn't mean anything. I'm not talking about anything. Yeah. 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 And then uh, something else that we've uh, I've seen like come up is uh, Lauren in the last interview. He was talking about how he listens to his music when he's intoxicated, he listens to it, like, when he's smoking dope, he listens to it when he's sober, just to see, like... Lauren, he, like, formally... Logan yeah, Logan, yeah. Okay, cool. And, and he wants to, and he, he does that to see, like, how his uh, music sounds like in different states, because, obviously, the fans are... I've been listening to your music, I've been, like, yeah. I have shit sometimes, sometimes I'm sober on the train, you know, so it's, like, it depends, and every time it's, like, a little different, so it's, like, do you do that to your own yeah, music? Yeah, I mean, and not just, like, not just, like, when you're fucked up or when you're whatever, like, that's part of it, too, like, hearing your shit in a different, like mental state will change shit and like give you a different perspective but I try to hear it like really in like car speakers like on somebody's like fucking little like house speakers like bluetooth yeah. shits or in an uber Definitely. or whatever you ever ask, ask the ask ask for the ox to play your own shit absolutely <laughs> especially if it's just me in there cause yeah. then it's just like yo like I'm paying for this I, ride yeah I don't, even tell him, I don't even tell him it's me it's just like hey can I put my shit on yeah I start playing my music and um yeah, I don't know. And like trying to hear it in like different headphones off off of different phones. Shit is important. And you start to hear shit like in the mix. It's like besides hearing like what you could do different, like in your like performance or whatever, as a producer, like I started to hear things like a mix differently or whatever like that too. Um and I don't know, like sometimes like my voice like I sing kinda like nasally. Yeah. And sometimes I hear myself in like a different context and it's like damn, it's like annoying, like grating as fuck. So I gotta like watch that, you know? <laughs> but yeah, it's important for sure. Sounds good, man. So anything else you wanna uh, let the listeners know or viewers know Shit. about yourself or anything to look out for? I know you got like the visuals coming up. Yeah, visuals coming soon. Video for Runaround will be out very soon. Um, a lot of collaborations in the works. No dates on anything, nothing now down, but there's a lot of work. There's a lot of like stuff on the way. This fall's gonna be pretty cool. I'm trying to make 
fall kind of like early summer was for me with like putting out secret to my strut Dope. so i'll have like a big drop coming real soon so all right so, so everyone go check out uh secret to my strut on soundcloud mm -hmm. soon to be on spotify and mm -hmm. forward slash stereotype b 